the trans-identified males in prison, at the moment, 100% of them in Ireland who are in the female estate are part of the highest band. So the most serious criminals are locked in with women who 95% of them tend to be non-violent. Criminologists will say that so many of them are victims of male violence and abuse that, in fact, male violence is the pathway to incarceration for females. So what's happening is there's a lot of men who identify as women in maximum security in men's prisons wanting to transfer. But women don't have that type of security. And the guards only come through once every two hours and there's no cameras. So you're living in the same house with them, sharing the same bathroom, laundry room, cooking in the kitchen with them. And there's a lot of things that are able to go on because there's no guards or cameras, right? It's out of control. Management doesn't know what they're doing. There's guards that are being physically attacked on top of the women too. We have to call them she, her, and we have to identify them as women or we're in trouble. So when you start putting men in with women who have not healed, who have trauma, it's the emotional manipulation and the control and the power that they have. And it's changed the entire dynamic inside the prison. It's full on co-ed relationships, pregnancies, STDs, sexual assaults, physical assaults. And there's women talking about like their underwear going missing from the washing machine. They were talking about how there was a sexual assault in the bathroom in one of the houses and the woman was taken out to the sexual assault clinic. The police were involved. They decided not to pursue charges. And this trans prisoner tried to go back to get into their house and the women all locked the door and wouldn't let him in the house so then the guards came and told the women that they had to let them in and if they didn't they were going to put bullying into their paperwork to prevent them from getting parole and that's what happens and it happens a lot and we got a person a man in from a male prison who had decided that he would identify as female so he was transferred to Cornville and within weeks of being there he decided that he wanted to identify as male again and insisted that we transfer him back to the male estate immediately and if we didn't he would rape female prisoners and staff and the more trans women I met in prison the more I became convinced that it was absolutely outrageous to put them in beside vulnerable, frightened, gaslit women. And from what Heather was telling us, it sounds like they live in, or they have to live in a state of hypervigilance, just constant fear. The Scottish Prison Service, to their credit, would not, at the moment, transfer a trans woman who has a record of sexual offending against women to the women's estate. However, one of the reasons that I started speaking out was that if gender self-ID becomes law in Scotland, the Scottish Prison Service will no longer have that power, will not be able to stop them coming to the women's estate. No matter what they've done, no matter what they're threatening, they will have to go to the women's estate. Most of them were not trans before they came in. Most of them made the decision that they were trans after they came in, and most of them were long-term prisoners. And there's a perception, I think, among these men that they'll get an easier time of it in the women's prison. Do you think as well it's because they want to prey on women? It's exactly that. The main thing holding us back from having a really honest debate about all of this, it's the absolute claptrap from Stonewall. This acceptance without question or exception. We had a man, but he decided he was trans. Now, this was a person who was so dangerous that the sheriffs didn't want him in court. He assaulted a prison officer really seriously. But of course, as soon as he said he was trans, people started to take him seriously. If self-ID was in place, he would be, and I would have had no choice but to accept that man into the women's prison that I ran. The whole thing is horrific. You can't hold these people in segregation unless they are presenting a real and present threat to the people around them. They go to separation for three days or seven days, and they don't say anything, and they don't act out of turn, because that means you cannot hold them there any longer, and you have to release them to the general prison population. So all this stuff about separating them off and segregating them, it's not possible. You cannot separate these people off unless they do something like rape or assault someone. 